please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome back to a Megon 2 Electric Boogaloo. Today we're going to be responding to a video shared via Alan Roberts, because much like libs of TikTok, this guy sees the finest mwah, shit. He had tweeted out, the claim is a 5 foot 2 tall woman that weighs 270 pounds, was eating 3 portioned meals a day and 2 snacks, totaling, spelt incorrectly, 800 calories while doing 7 days a week boot camp 10,000 steps a day with 2 elliptical sessions a day as her only way to lose weight. Count the lies. The video is 3 minutes long. Oh boy, this is going to be interesting, because there are a number of claims in that tweet alone that I want to poke holes at, but I'm sure there's a valid reason for it. Am I right? Well, is Zembic. I have tried to stitch this video without getting completely unhinged talking about this, but it's really, really hard for me. It's really hard for me. But why? Is it because time constraints on TikTok? Or is it you are unable to perhaps write down some notes and articulate a suitable point within a rather concise time frame? Um, I do not take this medicine, but I'm going to tell you guys a little story of something that happened to me personally about two weeks ago. So you want to talk about Ozempic, even though you've never taken it, and then use your own lived experience as a way of trying to make it seem relatable. Sounds about right for TikTok. So some background on me, I have PCOS, I am 34 years old, I'm about 5'2", I weigh about 270 pounds. PCOS is polycystic ovary syndrome, condition known for causing irregular periods, facial hair, and difficulty getting pregnant. Although I do think the last part you mentioned might be a contributing factor as well. And yes, I'm well aware I could have been a lot harsher in how I said that. If you want me to, I can. Not that that's anybody's business, but I'm just letting you know. Some background, okay? Well, I have been told sharing is caring. I've also been told it is important to list off a whole number of things when you meet new people, including pronouns. You didn't mention those, and I'm a bit disappointed in you for that. I have a good authority as well by listing all these things you have, that that in turn means that you are more of something than others, because it becomes some kind of pissing contest. In that case, um, I don't have PCOS, I'm 37, I'm well over 6 foot, and I don't weigh anything close to 270. In fact, I'm closer to 170, but that's none of your business. Okay, it's just some background. So, do the math, um, I'm obese. According to a quick BMI calculator, which is totally accurate, you are in fact in the obese range of 49.2 being your BMI. I did it for you, numbers are easy, it was actually surprisingly fast. Big up education. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi ho. It's me, obese. I thought you were going to do the Margaret thing. You got my hopes up and everything. Kind of stomped on my heart. Sad face. Anyway, so I, for years, have done boot camp, and there have been times that boot camp has worked for me, but I have to do it seven days a week, and I have to do elliptical in the morning when I wake up, and elliptical before I go to bed, so about three workouts a day. For those who don't know what an elliptical is, it's this. I hate them. You know why? Because a treadmill's better. These are a cheating hack way of getting a heart rate up a little, and not really accomplishing much. Using them is a very easy way of not really making yourself sweat, essentially. It just warms your heart rate a little bit, gets it up a little, makes it seem like you're doing something when really you're doing nothing. I find personally, treadmill or bike. Easiest one. Ellipticals are pointless. Claiming to do it twice a day, I can believe that, because you could have one of these in your own home, it's not overly complicated. But claiming to do an additional boot camp style workout during the day, while simultaneously weighing 270 pounds. Okay, I, I, I lost my sense of smell, but I'm sure there's some BS around here somewhere. When I see the flies, I'll be certain of it. No exaggeration. You know, with the intense eye contact and the certainty in delivery, I'm inclined to believe there is something wrong with you, but it's not just obesity. But you will require two different types of doctor to fix it. On top of that, I was walking about 10,000 steps a day, um, so essentially just exercising all day long. To be honest, 10,000 steps can be accomplished in an hour and a half of walking. It really can. For you, a little bit shorter than myself, a foot, no less, perhaps two and a half hours. The elliptical, many don't really go on there for more than 15-20 minutes at a time. There's no point. It's a warm-up. And your boot camp workout you mention is, well, not really um, described. 
buzz, buzz, buzz. Well, there's the bullshit. Took long enough. And eating three very portion meals and three and two very portion snacks that equated to be about mm, 800 to 1,000 calories a day. Yeah, that's right, girl. You dab on them haters. I can believe if you said to me that one of your meals portion was 1,000 calories. But to indicate you only eat 1,000 a day with your current health regimen is unlikely. Why? Because no dietitian, no one at a gym, no one would ever recommend that. Unless you were doing five to two, as in five normal days of eating and two days not eating as much. A fast over two days. Yeah, doing that seven days a week, your weight would slough off. Your weight would fall off so fast you would end up in hospital with an eating disorder. And because your body, at the weight you're at, where you would end up being, in a very short space of time I might add, would cause you to go into shock. You'd risk infection, you'd risk illness, the body wouldn't be able to handle it. And by the way, if you start to blame this on PCOS, I'm going to crack up for many different reasons. Especially when you, if you know this, obesity exacerbates things like PCOS. So severely under eating and overworking out, basically just protein, not even a single carb, not even a bean, okay? But beans are the magical fruit that make you toot. I had a trainer tell me beans were carbs, so I couldn't eat them. Your trainer needs to be fired for putting you on a thousand calories. And there are plenty of beans out there that are low in carbs. Green beans, green peas, edamame, lentils, chickpeas, kidney beans. Do I need to continue, by the way? There are more. Okay. No, but I'd like to know what you're taking for that delusion. Or when the last time you took it was. Perhaps when the last time you spoke to your personal trainer was, and if their name happened to be Kermit the Frog. Literal emotional damage. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! I like don't even buy hummus anymore, even though that I'm back to like eating somewhat relatively normal. I have this like thing about keeping hummus in the house because it's bad. It's also easier to shovel food into your face when you know you don't have to chew it. My nephew, one of them, loves it because he's young enough to consider it a progression on baby food. And then before someone gets triggered by me dabbing on hummus, shut up, shut up. Stop being such a twat. You're welcome. Okay. We're still at the stage where this is none of our business though, right? If that is still in effect, you saying okay is moot. My point is, is I've done it all. I've lifted weights. I've walked. I've done the elliptical. I've done cardio. I've done hit. I've done all of it. Okay. May I be the first to congratulate you then on completing the game. The game of Amberlynn Reed's cycle of failure. In the sense that you take up one, you fail at it. You choose another, you fail at it. You choose another, you fail at it. You choose another and you fail at it. You fall back on tired excuses because you're a failure. Now that might seem harsh on the face of it, but it's actually because of one word you used that set you up to fail. Dieting. You're already attacking this from the wrong angle. That's why you failed. So I'm at a friend's house a couple weeks ago and um, I'm just talking about how I had gone to my doctor's appointment and there's some health concerns going on um, in terms of like digestion, which is why I'm doing the colonoscopy. If you follow me, um, I'm going through the prep right now. Not quite yet, but I'm doing like a low fiber diet leading up to it. It's later this week. Can we go back to the part where this was none of our business? Because I don't need to know about your, well, soon to be impending blood stuff. Um, and I was telling her about some health issues and anemia that I'm experiencing and telling her about weight loss and just telling her how the doctor was like, well, you know, some people are just more genetically aligned to be obese, but there's like things we can do to help you. Ah, so you have been introduced to the fabled and sometimes considered mythical fat gene, spelt PH. Of course, we don't want to F-A-T shame anyone anywhere, least of all on this channel. We're, we're uh, inclusive. We, we really are. That's why I'm going to now show this video on the screen while I'm talking. This kid's a bit young to be doing this crap on TikTok. Just eating shitloads of junk food all the time. Yet there they are doing it every single time they upload. And before I even tell her that the doctor is considering putting me on something like, or not putting me on it, but like asking me if I would be considered doing something like a Wagobi, she starts ripping into me, basically telling me I'm not trying hard enough. Um, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. I'm going to make an assumption because I don't know the acronym Wagobi. I'm assuming it's Wagovi, which is a weight loss drug like Ozempic. Okay. In that area anyway. And your friend deserves a salute. A girl fashioned Arnold Rimmer Smeghead salute because they're 100% correct. 
If you can make a hundred excuses for why you can't do something, but not give one reason for why you can do something, the real problem is you. Um, and this is somebody I love and respect, but this is, this is not just something that she's done, okay? Many people have done this to me over the years. Oh, but this is still none of my business though, right? And this is such a common experience for people that are overweight. If I said this sounded an awful lot like a you problem, would you be able to take that on the chin? Or would you consider that a bit harsh? People think that you're not doing what you're supposed to do even when you are. And my whole thing to bring it back is, this shot is not a free pass to not do those things. You're right. These shots are a corner cutter, offered to you as a way of making things easier so you don't have to put in the hard work. I will look down on anyone that cuts a corner. I really will. I'm allowed to do that because I'm Cthulhu kin and we judge people like Magog does, harshly. And my point is, nobody, nobody owes an explanation of how they lose weight if they want to share. In your video, you shared, even though it was none of our business, you shared a lot, including butt stuff. That was a surprise. Usually don't get that on the first date. You then went on to explain how you have tried and tried and tried so hard and come so far, but in the end it didn't really matter because you were unsuccessful. You failed to be the very best like no one ever was. And unlike Arnold Rimmer, you are not handsome, trim, and no one slimmer. But you might well need a Zimmer. Three separate references in there. If you get all three of them, 10 points to your respective cancelled Hogwarts house. Alan Roberts is a remarkably insightful individual on Twitter and does provide some rather useful factoids concerning PCOS and your excuse making. Go follow him on Twitter, he's a good man.